Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a video on interview questions based on site reliability engineer or SRE. So let's start. The first question is what is site reliability in engineering and how does it differ from the traditional IT operations or DevOps? The answer to this question is site reliability engineering or SRE is a discipline that applies software engineering principles to IT operations with the goal of building scalable, reliable and efficient systems. Unlike traditional IT operations which are often focused on manual interventions and reactive troubleshooting, SRE emphasizes automation, monitoring and proactive measures to ensure system reliability. The key difference from DevOps is that SRE focuses more on measurable reliability goals like service level objectives and error budgets and reduces operational toil through automation and code driven processes. SRE teams work closely with development teams to bridge the gap between software engineering and operations, enabling faster development cycles while maintaining high availability and reliability. Question number two is, can you explain the relationship between SRE and DevOps? The answer to this question is, SRE and DevOps both aim to improve collaboration between development and operations teams. But they have different focuses. DevOps emphasizes cultural shifts, continuous delivery and breaking down silos to enable faster development cycles. SRE on the other hand takes a more engineering driven approach by applying software engineering principles to operations, focusing on measurable reliability, automation and the management of system reliability through practices like SLOs and error budgets. While DevOps is a broader philosophy, SRE is a specific implementation of these principles with a strong emphasis on reliability and scalability. Coming to the third question, it is what are the service level indicators, service level objectives and service level agreements? The answer to this question is, service level indicators are measurable metrics that reflect the performance or reliability of a service such as request latency or error rate. Service level objectives define the target or goal for an SLI such as 99.9% uptime over a specific period. Service level agreements or SLAs are formal contractual agreements between service providers and customers that specify the expected level of service, often including penalties for failing to meet the agreed upon SLOs. In SRE, SLIs and SLOs are used to drive reliability decisions, while SLS are used to establish expectations with stakeholders. The fourth question is, how do you measure system reliability? What metrics do you track? You can answer to this question as, system reliability is measured by tracking key metrics that reflect the health and performance of a system. The primary metrics include availability or uptime, percentage of time the system is operational and available. The second is latency, response time for user requests ideally under specific thresholds. Third is error rate, percentage of failed requests compared to successful ones. Fourth is throughput, the number of requests or transactions handled per unit of time. Fifth is SLO compliance. How well the system meets defined service level objectives. By monitoring these metrics, we can assess the reliability of a system, ensure it meets performance targets and proactively address any issues that may impact the user experience. The fifth question is, what is the role of an SRE in incident management? The answer to this question is, the role of an SRE in incident management is to ensure the system remains reliable and available even during incidents. SREs lead the response by quickly identifying, diagnosing and mitigating issues while minimizing downtime and impact to users. They focus on automating recovery processes to reduce manual intervention and, and improve the response times. After resolving the incident, SREs conduct post-mortems to analyze the root causes, identify improvements and implement changes to prevent the future occurrences. Throughout the process, they work closely with development and operation teams, ensuring clear communication and adherence to service level objectives or SLOs to balance reliability with innovation. For measuring and managing reliability, SREs define clear service level indicators or SLIs and service level objectives or SLOs to quantify reliability and drive decisions. Reliability is treated as a first class product feature. 
Then coming to blameless postmortems. SRAs conduct postmortem reviews of incidents to learn from failures without assigning blame, fostering a culture of continuous improvement. Coming to collaboration, SRAs work closely with development teams to ensure reliability is built into the system from the start, fostering a shared responsibility for both development and operational performance. These principles help create scalable, efficient and reliable systems while maintaining a high level of service for end users. The next question is, what are some of the key principles of SRE as defined by Google? The answer to this question is, Google defines several key principles of site reliability engineering that guide the discipline. First is embracing risk. SREs use error budgets to balance innovation with reliability. While aiming for high reliability or high availability, they acknowledge that some risk is acceptable and necessary for continuous improvement and feature development. Next is automation. To reduce toil, SRE emphasizes automating the manual tasks, enabling teams to focus on more impactful work. This includes automating deployment, scaling and recovery processes. The seventh question is, <coughs> can you explain the concept of toil in SRE? How do you minimize it? You can answer to this question as, in SRE, toil refers to the manual, repetitive and non-value adding work that does not contribute to a long-term improvement or system innovation. Toil is typically operational tasks like on-call rotations, incident response and routine maintenance that could be automated but are still done manually, leading to inefficiency and burnout. To minimize toil, SRAs focus on automation, creating scripts, tools and processes that eliminate the repetitive tasks. Additionally, SRAs prioritize identifying and eliminating the root causes of toil by analyzing work patterns and continuously improving the workflows. The goal is to free up time for more impactful engineering work such as building scalable systems or enhancing the reliability features, ultimately improving both team productivity and system performance. The eighth question is, what are error budgets? How do they work and why are they important in SRE? You can answer to this question as, an error budget in SRE is the acceptable threshold of unreliability for a system, typically defined as the difference between target availability, that's SLO, and the actual system performance. For example, if an SLO states that a service should be available 99.9% .9 of the time, the error budget is 0.1% downtime or failure. Error budgets are important because they provide a quantifiable measure of how much risk or unreliability is acceptable before action is required. This balance between reliability and feature delivery allows time or allows teams to make data-driven decisions whether to focus on stability and incident resolution if the error, if the error budget is nearly exhausted or to prioritize new features or improvements if the system is performing well within the error budget. It helps avoid over-engineering for perfect reliability, promoting an efficient approach to both innovation and operational stability. The next question is, how does SRE approach managing uptime and reliability for mission-critical systems? You can answer to this question as, SRE approaches managing uptime and reliability for mission critical systems by focusing on measurable reliability goals and continuous improvement. The process begins with defining clear service level objectives, that's SLOs, based on service level indicators, that is SLIs, ensuring the system's performance aligns with user expectations. Now, to manage the uptime, SRE teams implement robust monitoring and alerting systems, enabling early detection of potential issues before they impact the users. They leverage automation to handle routine tasks, reduce human error, and ensure fast recovery from incidents, minimizing the downtime. Additionally, SREs use error budgets to balance system reliability with the need for innovation. If the error budget is consumed too quickly, the focus shifts to stability and incident resolution. Otherwise, feature development can proceed. SREs also emphasize resilience engineering by designing for fault tolerance, ensuring the system can gracefully handle failures, and implementing disaster recovery plans to ensure continuity. 
This proactive data driven approach allows SRE teams to maintain a high level of reliability while driving system improvements and innovation. This video was based on basic SRE concepts and general knowledge. In the next video, I'll be giving you the questions with answers for incident management and troubleshooting. I hope you like my videos. Do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching my videos.